Hello, and welcome to this video on Sitecore Experience Commerce 9.3. Here we're going to cover some of the new features and improvements that have been introduced in the Sitecore SXA storefront. First of these is a series of improvements to the search functionality. We've moved to now use the standard search components provided with the Sitecore Experience Accelerator, giving us better alignment across the platform. Secondly, we've introduced Scriven, a lightweight, fast templating language to enable merchandisers and marketers to customize their sites with ease. Looking at the search improvements first, we've introduced new generic customizable search result components. We're using the standard SXA search box now, and we're also leveraging the standard SXA faceting components and facet summary. On top of that, we've also introduced category searching, so you can now search for specific products within the category you're actually viewing at the time. Scriven is a new addition to Sitecore Experience Accelerator 9.3, and it's now fully supported in the SXA storefront as well. It's a fast, lightweight scripting engine. It frees up marketers and merchandisers to be able to customize controls to get the exact rendering layout they desire. It also gives developers complete customizability of the storefront controls. So let's take a look at some of these in action. I've loaded up the default SXA storefront that you get with Experience Commerce 9.3. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into one of the categories. Straight away, you'll notice there's a brand new search component at the top. As mentioned before, this allows you to now search for specific products just within the category that I'm viewing. For example, if I wanted to view a specific microwave, I can search and hit enter, and it'll just refine all the appliances I'm viewing down to the microwaves in the category. As mentioned before, all of this is built using the standard SXA functionality. We're no longer using e-commerce specific controls for the search listing, and that means we have much better alignment across the platform as a whole. Okay, so that shows the changes we've made to the search results page. But what I really want to show you is Scriven and how that really changes the story of when you're editing the structure and the layout of your storefront. What I want to do first is I'm going to clear this search we just did. So we're back to the default search results page. And I'm going to change the layout of each of these panels for the results. What I want to do is I don't really like that in stock label hanging just above. I'm going to move that in stock notifier to be appear inside this details panel. So there'll be no details link anymore. That will serve as both the link to the product page and also a stock notifier. So what I've done is I've jumped straight over to the content editor and we're gonna browse and find the Scriven template for that search results control. It exists under our rendering variants section under commerce search results. And if we expand this out, we can see we have a Scriven template stored in here. Now you could edit it directly in the content editor well, personally, I find it a bit easier to do this inside some kind of IDE like Visual Studio Code. Once we load this up, we can change our text type to HTML. And then we get some really nice syntax highlighting, making this editing process a lot simpler. So we can see here we have my product stock status label. And we also have my details link here. And I want to replace this text with the stock status text instead. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove that text altogether because I don't want this to, this isn't static text I'm trying to output like the details label. Then I'm gonna take the data bind attribute from this label above, and I'm just gonna add that to my anchor. Once that's finished, we can remove the empty label from before. And then we can just copy all of this and jump back into the content editor, replace the template details in there, publish the changes. So I've hopped back over to my storefront. I just need to refresh the page. And we can see the content's been updated. The details link now displays my in-stock notification for me. So that's all well and good. You can see how easy it is to edit an existing control. But what about if we want to build an entirely new control? What about if we want a completely different way of displaying data? Well, that's possible as well. I'm gonna hop into one of these product details. And this section above here is what's known as the product information section, which displays the title and the description. And what I wanna do is I wanna expand on that to display a lot more information about the product. 
Okay, so we already have rendering variants configured under page content for this control. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna build on top of that to create an entirely new rendering variant. And we're gonna call this one Product Information Scribbon. Inside this rendering variant, all we're gonna do is insert a Scribbon element. And this is where we're gonna add our template in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back over to VS Code just to type this up. And here's one I wrote earlier. Now what we're outputting first is the product name which is the item display name, then we're going to output a series of different product details. We're going to start with the product number, we're going to output its description, any features the product has, the brand of the manufacturer, and finally the color. So we can take this data here, and we can copy this back into the content editor. We can paste this in, save our rendering variant, and we'll publish it so it's available. The next thing I need to do is to go and actually add this to the page. So I'm gonna to go to my partial design for the default main products page container. And we're gonna open it in the experience editor. Now the first thing I need to do is remove the existing product information control. We'll drop this on. And you need to save it before you can change the rendering variants. So we'll save that, we'll select the control again, and then we'll change it over to Product Information Scribbon. And you can see we have the different values that we entered before. We can save that, publish the page, and now we can go and take a look at what it looks like on the storefront. And there we go, we have a brand new control that's been output. We have the title, we have our item number, description, features, brand and color. And this is looking okay, but you'll notice that this product doesn't actually have its item number completed. It doesn't have its features field completed or its color. So it'd be really nice if we could add a bit of logic around into the Scribbin template to be able to only selectively display those elements if they're populated. And luckily we can do just that. I'm gonna hop back into Visual Studio Code again. And I'm gonna paste in a new version of this template. Very similar to before, but you'll notice there's now a series of if statements in there. What this is gonna do is, it's gonna check the size of the string that I'm trying to output. For example, if you look at this first one, it's gonna check that the item number has a string length greater than zero. In other words, has that field been populated? It does exactly the same for the description, for the features, for the brand, and for the color field, allowing us to provide some pretty simple logic around what does and doesn't get displayed. So once we've finished that and we're happy with it, we can once more copy it and jump back into the content editor. If we go back to our Scribbin template from before, under page content, product information Scribbin, we can now paste in the new version of our template. Publish the changes. Hop back to the storefront. And there we go. Now we only see the fields that are actually populated. A much better experience for the end user. Now I'm not quite finished yet. The last thing I want to look at is how our content editors experience it in the experience editor. We can see it was a pretty plain output. We can see the field labels, but not how it looks when it's going to be populated with actual data. And we can make that a lot better as well. I'm gonna once more hop back to VS Code and I'm gonna paste in the final version of this template. The lower section here hasn't changed from before. It still has the same conditional logic about what elements to display when on the storefront. But the interesting part is the part above. This section now has a different area which will be only be displayed when the editor is in experience editor mode. That means we'll get some nice lorem ipsum text showing what the page will look like if the data is actually populated. So let's copy that. We can drop in our new template changes. We'll publish those out. And now we can refresh the experience editor. 
and you'll see you get a much nicer layout now. You can see you get sample data for the title, item number, the description, features, brand and colour, showing you what it's going to look like on the storefront. Thanks for watching and make sure to follow the Learn Sitecore hashtag for future videos.